How's it going guys? I know you've missed me and these crazy little transformation builds I've been doing lately. This one's taken a little bit longer to make, but hopefully it will be worth the wait. My name's Oskip, and today I'll be transforming another one of my Patreon's builds. Before we get things underway, I wanted to say a massive thank you to Justin Batterman for the support. Hopefully I can do your build justice. Now, initially when I first opened up the world and had a look around, I was already impressed with some of the builds and I wasn't really sure where to begin transforming. The world consists of several smaller builds scattered around, which included a few houses, a watchtower, a campsite, and a treehouse. Considering I was having a tough time wrapping my head around things about figuring out what to do, I decided the best thing that I could do was to delete all of the trees, grass, and flowers in the area to see each build clearly. I then cut each of them out and lifted them into the air and set them aside for the time being while I reworked the terrain. There are a few key features of the terrain that Justin included, one of which was a small waterfall and on the other side of the build, a volcano. I wanted to enhance these features and make them a key part of the build. And I'll admit, things got a little bit out of hand. One issue that I'd noticed was that Justin's world was built on a super flat world type meaning that I had to lift up the terrain by quite a bit to avoid breaking through into the void beneath. This proved to be a problem several times while terraforming, as I would accidentally use my world edit tools to lower the ground level, and because I was working with gravel to make a more natural looking landscape, any time I did this, the gravel would then fall down through the floor and into the void, which would lag out and lock up the game, making it impossible to do anything. I had to simply wait for the game to start responding again, and then I could continue working. Anyway, as you can see, I went way too overboard and did some extreme landscaping, creating this massive mountain which would house a lake at the top with water pouring down to different levels for the waterfall. At the very bottom of the mountain, I accentuated the lake with the island in the middle and continued making more mountains. You can see here I had a few situations where I broke through into the void, so it took a while to fix, but once I managed it, I continued building up the terrain further, connecting it to the central lake. Thankfully, I was able to install Voxel Sniper as well as World Edit for this build. Voxel Sniper is an extremely powerful terrain editing tool and with it, you can get some really nice looking results. I began blending some of the mountains together, trying to work all those thousands of spheres together to get something that actually resembled mountains and cliff faces. Lastly, I started making a separate lake to replace Justin's pond and created a raised section of land for the house next to it. I fixed up some more of the main mountain where the waterfall would reside and then continued making mountains, gradually connecting them up to blend with the landscape. It's extremely satisfying doing all of this terrain editing with gravel as not only does the end result look really good, but it's also satisfying to see it magically build up in the time lapse. Anyway, with the waterfall on one side of the map, I finally reached the other side with the volcano. Now, because the other mountain I created was absolutely massive, I didn't want it to dwarf the volcano, so I had to make it equally as massive to match. I edited it for a while as I really wanted to get that natural looking slope up to the peak. I made a crater in the centre of the volcano which I would then come back to later on in the build. Before that though, I had to continue and finish up the last major terrain editing. I proceeded to build up and add in two smaller mountains and finally connect them up to the very beginning. Now from here you can really see the scale of the environment. I converted all of the gravel into stone and added a layer of dirt and grass. Now that I've added some greenery into the mixture, I wanted to add some variety to the grey rock. So I mixed in some cobble, andesite, diorite and a handful of coral blocks into the stone. It's a subtle change but it adds a lot when you look up close. It was time to create the actual waterfall now. After some quick terrain edits, using diamond blocks I gradually painted the cliffs. I broke the waterfall up into three sections until it reached the ground level. 
I then went around and started filling all of the lakes and each section of the waterfall up with water. Now, Minecraft liquids are awful <laughs> and have a tendency to flow in every which way, which was frustrating as in this situation with the waterfall, I didn't actually want it to flow. I wanted it to retain the shape that I had painted using the diamond blocks. I went about trying to fix this a few ways. I tried changing it all to blue stained glass and honestly, it looked good in the default Minecraft. However, with shaders on, it didn't blend well with the actual water. The only solution that I could think of to achieve the look that I wanted was to surround the waterfall in barrier blocks. Barrier blocks work so that you only see them if you're holding them in hand, otherwise they're invisible. Which is currently why you can see my character darting around frantically but not actually doing anything. <laughs> Doing this is annoying because you can't access the waterfall and actually go into it, but it was a small price to pay for salvation. Now, for the volcano. I scattered in some black concrete blocks into the mixture of stone and made it denser near the peak. I then chipped away at the edge to allow a path for the lava to leak and pour out of it down the side of the mountain. I used the same technique here as I did for the waterfall, where I painted the rock with gold blocks. This was a placeholder until I placed barrier blocks on each and every single one of them to stop the lava flowing randomly. Finally, I converted it to lava. And back at the top, I filled the volcano in with a layer of glass. On top of the glass, I scattered some campfires around and then finally added in a layer of lava on top. Lastly, I scattered around some magma blocks near the lava edge back in the center of the map. If you can remember on Justin's build, he had a broken wooden bridge that connected the island to the land. I decided to use campfires to make a nifty little rope bridge, which looks pretty cool when all of them are on fire, to be honest. Now it was time for some of the final terraforming. I built up the island a little bit more to connect with the rope bridge. And I then raised it even a little bit higher from that for the house to reside on with a small dirt path that linked up to the bridge that came around the cliffside. Now, with the watchtower, I decided to relocate it up to the top of the mountain as I felt it gave it more purpose up at that height. I retweaked the design slightly, but I really didn't deviate that much from the original. Instead of a watchtower, I converted it slightly into a beacon lighting up the mountain. I guess it kind of reminded me of Lord of the Rings and I guess that's a little bit of inspiration from there as well. As for the little tent and campfire, I wanted to flesh it out slightly and breathe a bit more life into it. I added some logs to sit around the campfire and changed the tent design slightly. I then duplicated it and made a little pen for a pair of horses next to it. Then finally, I just added in some lighting and a dirt path to make the area feel more trodden and actively lived in. Now, onto the first house of the build, I started with this wooden shack that was hidden in the forest. With this house, I really wanted to try and create something really worn down. I wanted it to appear as if no one had lived in it for years and it had been left to rot and gradually deteriorate. I started by making the house normally and then, once happy with it, I started destroying it. <laughs> Adding deliberate holes and mixing in stairs and slabs here and there and boarding up the windows using signs, which turned out really well, actually. The main building in the center was run down and appeared as if it hadn't been lived in for quite some time, with deliberate holes and uneven building layout. I felt that his building was honestly already pretty finished, so instead of upgrading it, I decided to use it as my block palette and create a new building in its place that fit the landscape a little bit better. I wanted to keep the same sort of medieval style to the build, but give it a sort of Dracula kind of vibe, making it a creepy abandoned manor house that no one would ever dare venture over the rickety rope bridge to get to. <laughs> I'm creating lore here, you see. <laughs> I tried a slightly different roof style to what I'm used to, flattening off the top rather than having it meet at a peak. I then mirrored the one side of the building that I'd completed over to the other side and started working on this little outcropping of roof on the side of the wall. Down at the front, I created this grand entrance to the building and some stairs down to it. 
and I included plenty of wooden support beams in this house. Using signs across the windows, I was able to give it that boarded up appearance once more, and then made a little side entrance with a smaller doorway as well. Mixing mossy and cracked stone brick, I started to weather the building, adding leaves draping off the roof and climbing up the walls. And lastly, I created a dead tree on the edge of the cliff next to the house. Coming over to the final house of the build that resides next to the small lake. This tavern looking house was pretty much already done. I really didn't have to change that much of it from the original. I started by raising the centre of the building up by a few blocks and slightly changed the roof to make it a steeper incline. I added some small flower pot arrangements outside a few of the windows and swapped out the dark oak supports that lined the walls. Instead, I used a cobblestone wall and spruce gate design and proceeded to add it to each of the walls. Mimicking the same designs around to the side and back of the building, I added this rough chimney stack protruding from the roof and I added a canopy atop one of the balconies made up of slabs and trap doors. I varied the roof design to make it uneven and I used anvils as the banister. Lastly, I changed some of the supports to stone and that was about it. Finally, you can see me adding this gravel and grass path down along to each other aspect of the build, linking everything up. Using World Edit, I covered the grassy landscape in grass, tufts and flowers. I then painted in a dense spruce forest surrounding the tavern. And to break things up, I had the trees gradually disperse and change into a large oak forest surrounding the campsite and the extremely broken wooden shack. Lastly, to finish off the build, I had to complete it by adding in his little tree house. I built one large custom oak tree with platforms for two levels to the treehouse. Using barrier blocks once more, I placed ladders on them and made it appear like a rope ladder hanging down to each of the levels, which is a pretty cool trick. Finally, I added in some lanterns to light things up. And with that, the build is complete.
I hope that you all enjoyed again. This build took much longer than expected due to technical issues and being much larger than usual. <laughs> so I'd really appreciate it if you could show me some love and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like this. Again, a big thank you to Justin for the support. Usually with the Patreon builds, I would keep the download private as it's their world that I'm transforming. However, he was kind enough to let me post the download and make it available for you all to check out for yourself. So you can download this map for free over on my Patreon now. Same as always, you can check it out with the link in the description or on the end card. That's all for now though, so I hope that you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time.